But before we, before we start, I'll just mention that during this public meeting, portions of the proceedings, the following procedures will be taken for each application being considered. I will announce the application in order as listed on the agenda. Tracy, Tracy Webster, our senior planner, will summarize her findings and give recommendations. The applicants will be asked if they wish to add any further information or comments. All participants will be unmuted for this portion of the proceedings. The public will be asked if they wish to make any comments on the application. And in order to be recognized by the chair, please approach by stating through you, your worship, I, your name, would like to make comments regarding this application. Once the chair has recognized you, you may be able to speak. Please try to refrain from speaking over someone else. Thank you. And I'll call this meeting to order at 930. We'll start off with a territorial land acknowledgement. Before our meeting gets underway, I would like to formally recognize the traditional keepers of the land and specifically our neighbors of the Alderville First Nation with a formal territorial acknowledgement. We respectively acknowledge the Township of Alma Cullima is located on the Mississaugan Ashenembic territory and is the traditional territory of the Mississaugan Ashenembic. The Township of Alma Cullima respectively acknowledges that the Mississaugan Nation are the collective stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and the integrity for generations to come. And I'll read the, uh, before we start, I'll just read off the procedures and how people can speak. The procedure by law identifies how and when members of the public may take part in a council meeting. Regular council meetings are open to the public and they are encouraged to attend. To speak at a regular meeting, a request for a delegation form must be submitted to the clerk. These forms are available on our website. For public meetings, they are open to the public. They allow members of the public to address council without the need to pre-register their request. An example of a public meeting is today a planning meeting where a portion of the um, meeting is open to the public for discussion or yeah. comments. Uh, and this is for land use planning applications and how they were reviewed. The council seeks input from the public on these. And closed sessions may occur during a council meeting to discuss confidential matters as identified in the Municipal Act, Section 239. Members of the public are not permitted to attend these meetings. I'll ask for disclosure of pecuniary interest for members of council. Seeing none, that'll be duly noted. Next, we have uh, the approval of the agenda as circulated. Be it resolved the agenda of the planning regular council session of Tuesday, January 24th, 2024, be approved as circulated. Did I get mover and a seconder? Moved by Deputy Mayor Stover, seconded by Councillor Booth. Any discussion? All in favor? Motions carried. Uh, next, we have a motion to adjourn to a land division committee or committee of adjustment meeting. Be it resolved that the Council of the Township of Alma Calderman, being a land division committee or a committee of adjustment, adjourn to a land division committee, committee of adjustment meeting for the purposes of hearing consent applications at 9.34 a.m. Mover and a seconder. Moved by Councillor O'Neill, seconded by Councillor uh, Ainsworth. All in favor? Carried. Our first application is from Isabel, Isabel <coughs> Bozabart and Richard Clark, AH112023, Concession 6, Part Lot 26, geographically in the Township of Haldeman regarding a surplus farm dwelling. Chris, are you ready to take us through this?
if you refer to it. I don't have a bunch of counsel any problem with that. Nope, go ahead. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, sorry, uh, Mayor Lobo. Uh, some of the uh, people on the screen can't hear. Thank you. Yeah. I'll just say no. Can't hear me. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you go to the side, Yolanda? Bring it over to the side. Try again. Are you able to hear? Okay. I'll start over. So, the proposal will cover a surplus farm dwelling and outdoor special events venue from the farmlands. Additional justification was required to demonstrate policy conformity since the outdoor special events venue will no longer be considered an on-farm diversified use once the agricultural lands are removed from the property. Approximately 5.46 hectares or 3.5 acres will be uh, retained and 42.09 hectares or 104 acres will be severed for farm purposes. Uh, the retained portion contains two dwellings, a barn, an uh, open patio space, storage area, commercial parking, a livestock enclosure for a few sheep, wetlands and a water course. Mm. This parcel was rezoned in, I believe, 2021 to accommodate an outdoor special events venue, which was considered an on-farm diversified use at the time. 
The property is located at the northwest or sorry, northeast corner at the intersection of Nickel Road and County Road 22, also known as Centerton Road. We're recommending conditions, typical conditions of approval. In addition, a rezoning is required to prohibit residential uses on the severed agricultural lands. Uh, the county requires a road widening along County Road 22. The application had both the zoning and the severance applications were deferred in, on January, or sorry, July 25th, 2024 to provide the applicants time to demonstrate consistency and conformity with the provincial county and township policies for the um, surplus farm dwelling severance. Uh, the applicant has since retained Clark Consulting, who has submitted a planning justification report in November of 2023, along with an amendment to the draft zoning bylaw. So where an owner of a farm operation acquires lands to be consolidated into a farm operation, uh, and there's an existing dwelling that uh, was in existence prior to July 1st, 2017. The policies do support the severance of that surplus farm dwelling. Uh, it's also permitted within the uh, Oak Ridge's Marine Conservation Plan under section 32. or 3216. <clears throat> It permits severance of parts of it also sever or sorry it also permits severance of parts of a lot that are devoted to a different use, but only if that use was legally established at the time of the severance, in which case the wedding venue had been legally established. Uh, section thirteen three fourteen of the Oak Ridge's Moraine Conservation Plan permits small scale commercial uses provided they're not in prime agricultural lands or uh, where the agricultural is use is the main use. Um, section 15 allows for creation of new lots in the countryside area for surplus farmhouse severances um, as outlined in section 32. The proposed severance qualifies um, as a surplus farm severance as the farmland is to be purchased by a farmer with an existing farm operation in the area. The lot also qualifies as a lot devoted to a different use, which is which will be separated from the actively used farmland uh, by this consent. Section 37 also permits low intensity recreational uses uh, that have minimal impact on the natural environment and require little terrain or vegetation modification and few if any buildings or structures. On this basis, the special event venue would qualify uh, as a low intensity recreational use and also section 40 describes small scale commercial uses that uh, include um, uses like community halls. Uh, provisions uh, require that the use not affect the rural character of the countryside or the ecological integrity of the plan area. Um, when they uh, had the, their, their uh, previous zoning bylaw, they did submit a natural heritage evaluation and there is uh, recommendations from that was incorporated into the exception zone on the property. <laughs> The proposal has been determined to comply with the provincial policy statement, the growth plan, the Oak Ridge's Moraine plan, the county and our uh, township official plan. I can discuss the zoning when we adjourn to the next meeting, if you like. Yep. So we are recommending approval of that application. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Any questions or comments for members of council? application. Seeing none, um, any member of the public wish to speak to this? Bob? Looks like you're planning on talking about it. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my name is Bob Clark. I'm the planning consultant that was retained to prepare the uh, planning justification report. Um, essentially what uh, we're looking at here is 
a severance, which will not change the land uses on the property. And I think that's the, uh, the basic planning principle that I would suggest applies to this situation uh, because the, uh, the severance itself, uh, as, as Tracy has indicated, uh, severs the residential portion of the property, which has some uh, commercial and uh, special event uh, uses and leaves the agricultural area intact. And that's being purchased by the farm. Uh, uh, Mark and Cindy Bickle, or if you have farmed the, uh, the property uh, for some time. Um, I, I think Tracy made a good job of explaining the basis for the uh, application and uh, the consistency with the provincial policies and the local county uh, I'm available to answer any questions and uh, I assume that uh, that, that uh, Richard and uh, Isabel will be uh, available as well. Thank you. Any questions for Bob? Go ahead. Just one question, Your Worship, through you, Bob, or maybe Tracy. I'm just reading where it says, um, as a condition of the severance, uh, county public work requires the applicant to provide a road widening free and clear. That's not actually talking about construction, right? Is that talking about, because later it goes, the applicant's deed of road widening to the county of Northumberland. They're not actually doing any physical work on 22, right? Go ahead. My understanding of that uh, requirement is it's merely a land transfer to the county. Okay. That, that's how I read it after the second part. I thought we were going to ask them to do construction on 22 or something, and it was going to be very expensive. Okay. Thank you. Just a quick comment. Uh, my understanding is that most applications are like this. The county does ask for another two feet of in general for the balances on, on county Go ahead, Councilor Neal. Um, I'm actually trying to remember when this came before us. Um, was there not some concerns about parking? And I don't see anything mentioned about parking in this. Like the space for parking and its designation. So. Um, the, the parking was addressed in the previous application. They did provide a parking area for the outdoor wedding, wedding outdoor. It's not necessarily wedding, weddings, outdoor event venue. Okay, thank you. Um, Isabel or Richard, do you have any comments? Thank you. I'm gonna read the resolution. Be it resolved the application AH112023 by Isabel Bozovart and Richard Clark to serve a surplus, <coughs> sever a, a, a surplus farm dwelling in part of lot 26 concession six geographically in the township of Haldeman be approved subject to the <coughs> following conditions. That the retainer lot be rezoned to prohibit residential use in the township of Alma Haldeman Zoning bylaw 19 2019 as amended. That a registered survey for this separate parcel will be submitted to the township. Further, that the printing plant of a survey, a closed polygon vector file of the part boundaries shown on the uh, reference plan to be, is to be provided in spatially reference auto disk DWG windows readable format to the satisfaction of the township. It is recommended that the applicants Ontario land surveyor consult with the County of Northumberland GIS section to confirm acceptable standards and formatting. Number four, that a draft transfer for the severed parcel be submitted to the township. And number five, that the tax account for the subject property be paid up to date. <coughs> I move for a seconder. Moved by Councillor Booth, seconded by Deputy Mayor Stover. Any further questions or comments? All in favor? That motion is carried. Then we have another motion. Uh, motion to reconvene to the Municipal Planning Regular Council meeting. Be it resolved the Council of the Township of Val McCaldwin, being a land division committee, commit 
Committee of Adjustment reconvene to the Municipal Planning Regular Council meeting at 9.30. Nine fifty, pardon. Mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councilor Ainsworth and seconded by Councilor O'Neill. All in favor? That's carried. <clears throat> and we're going into a public meeting regarding zoning applications. And this is for Isabel Bozabard and Richard Clark. Zoning 092023, bylaw 2024, in section six, part of lot 26, geographically in Hulden. So, as noted earlier, the proposal was deferred in July of 2023 uh, to deal with the policy conformity, which I discussed earlier, and the zoning, uh, we tested the zoning application and the first and same policies and it's determined to comply. Uh, the site was uh, rezoned Oak Ridges Moraine countryside exception number eight in 2021 through the adoption of bylaw 99-2021. This uh, zoning exception applied to the area of uh, concentrated around the Southern portion of the property and permits an outdoor special events venue without any permanent buildings. Uh, the current rezoning application is required as a condition of approval of the consent we just discussed um, and it introduced introduces a number of site-specific exception zones, which will prohibit residential uses on the proposed retained parcel of land. Uh, the retained parcel, sorry, the, the, the land that will go to the feed farm um, will be rezoned to site-specific exceptions, Oak Ridges Moraine Countryside-11, uh, Oak Ridges Moraine Environmental-1, and Oak Ridges Moraine Linkage-1 zone which will prohibit the construction of a new residential dwelling on those agricultural lands. And this is consistent with the policy direction for the uh, consensus outlined under the provincial policy statement and the Oak Ridges Marine Conservation Plan, as well as the county and the township official plans. The limits of the um, of the Oak Ridges Moraine countryside exception number eight zone, which uh, permits the outdoor special exception events venue will be adjusted to match up with the lot that contains the surplus farm dwelling and that event venue space. Uh, it will retain the regulation that speak to the um, recommendations of the natural heritage evaluation that was done previously. Uh, so the application is recommended for approval. It was circulated to uh, adjacent property owners and we had received no um, calls on the application uh, during this round. Uh, in July, there had been one call for further clarification. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Any uh, questions or comments from council? Seeing none, uh, any uh, speak from the uh, members of the public? Bob, you want to say something? Uh, I <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Any other members of the public? Or Isabel? No comments? Okay, thank you. I'll read the resolution. Be it resolved that the application Z092023 by Isabel Bozabart and Richard Clark to amend the zoning on a parcel of land legally described as part of lot 26, concession six, geographically in the township of Haldeman to Oak Ridges Moraine Countryside exception number eight, Oak Ridges Moraine Countryside ex exemption number 11, Oak Ridges Moraine Environmental 
ex exception number one and Oak Ridges Marine linkage exception number one in the township of Alma Calderman zoning bylaw 19 2019 as amended be approved. And further that a bylaw will be passed later this meeting. Mover and a seconder. Moved by Councillor Booth. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Stover. Any further discussion? All in favor. Motions carried. Thank you, everyone. Moving right along. Um, the next item is item 8-2. Uh, agenda title is Victor Hesima. Z01-2024, concession B parts of lot three, four, and five. Geographically in Haldeman, it's regarding to permit the use of a game bird hunting preserve. Tracy, go ahead. Great, thank you. The application Z01-2024 applies to two adjacent parcels of land that are located in part of lots three, four, and five concession B, geog geographic township of Haldeman, and are owned by Victor Hazma. The subject lands uh, total 63.78 hectares or 157.6 acres and is located on an unnamed and unopened road allowance south of County Road 2 between Heron Road and Town Line Road. There are, uh, there is a 71.3 square meter or 768 square foot unserviced, unserviced storage building, wood lots, wetland and water courses on the site. The parcels uh, direct, are directly north of the CN and CPR rail lines. The site is surrounded by woodlands and wetlands and there's scattered farm fields beyond the wetlands and woodlands that extend on adjacent properties. There are no properties with residential dwellings that are directly abutting the site and the nearest dwelling is over 700 meters from the subject property. Uh, the subject property contains tributaries of Colburn Creek and extensive wetlands, both unevaluated and portions of the Lakeport provincially significant wetland. The subject lands are situated uh, almost entirely with an area regulated by the Lower Trent Conservation Authority. The purpose of the application is to permit a game bird hunting preserve on the property. The Fish and Wildlife Conservation Act defines the game bird hunting preserve as an area in which game bird hunting birds are propagated under a license and released for the purpose of hunting. The applicant sells the opportunity to hunt released game birds to hunters on his property as a commercial operation. Through discussions with the applicant, he indicated that a group of hunters will come to the property for a few hours at a time and conduct their hunts. They advise that they are fully insured, licensed, and MNRF compliant. Uh, hunters use uh, only shotguns uh, for their hunts. Uh, there is a typo in the report. The applicant did purchase the property in 2019, not 2018. Um, he had requested a zoning compliance letter in February of 2022, which advised the conserva that conservation and recreational uses are permitted in the provincially significant wetland zone and agricultural zones, and that the environmental protection zone permits conservation areas, including recreational activities, nature study and wildlife areas or similar uses for the preservation of the natural environment. Staff did issue a revision to that letter in August of 2023 to advise that a rezoning is required to permit a commercial game bird hunting preserve. Uh, staff received legal advice that indicated that the proposed use does not fit with either the conservation or recreation uh, use definitions in zoning bylaw 20 or sorry zoning bylaw 19-2019 and it was recommended that uh, a newly defined term that reflects the specific use of the game bird hunting preserve be created uh, the applicant had done some upgrades to the unopened municipal road allowance and tr lower track conservation expressed some concern with those works due to the proximity of the provincially significant wetland and the location within a regulated area. 
to address these concerns, the applicant is required to provide an opinion letter from an environmental consultant describing the roadworks undertaken and any impacts and mitigation measures that may need to be done. And he has retained a consultant to do that work. Um, rezoning can address the issue of access to the property. And uh, if, if the application is um, recommended for approval, a form of road agreement would um, have to be uh, entered into that would indemnify the township and make it clear that there's no obligation for municipal maintenance and assumption and that there could be issues with uh, emergency services. There is an existing uh, building, as noted earlier, that was permitted for an agricultural use. Section 4.1.4, sorry, 4.13.1 does permit agricultural buildings to be erected on an unmaintained road. However, since the game bird hunting preserve has a commercial component, an ex exception to the zoning bylaw would be needed. Uh, through pre-consultation, uh, the M Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry staff did participate, and they indicated that the applicant is required to obtain the license to operate a game bird hunting preserve, um, and that they regulate those facilities. The license um, would allow for the hold and release of the birds of a huntable age for the purpose of hunting. Other regulations are discussed in the report. Um, the MNRF at that time advised that the minimum size requirement is 100 acres, and they noted that they had not received any complaints about the site to date. The proposed development is considered an agricultural related uh, use. Uh, it has a recreational component uh, and a commercial aspect of it that can generally be considered um, within rural and prime agricultural areas consistency with the provincial policy statement and conformity with the growth plan, county official plan, and all what called them an official plan will be determined upon completion of the review of the application. Uh, Site-specific exception zones would be required to include a defined term that reflects the specific use of a game bird hunting preserve, and the exceptions uh, would need to be applied to the environmental protection and provincially significant wetland uh, zones to identify that building site structures and site alteration would not be permitted. Further review is needed to determine an appropriate buffer distance required by uh, the Canadian Pacific Railway as noted in their comments and discussed uh, further. Should the application be approved, it's expected that a uh, site-specific exception zone will only apply to lands within a safe distance. Additional regulations may be crafted to address concerns by departments, agencies, and the public. Should the application be approved upon completion of the review, a holding symbol will be applied to secure ne necessary agreements and site plan approval and completion of the letter from the environmental consultant. The county did not have any objection to the proposed application, provided it's appro appropriately buffered from sensitive land uses and uh, bathroom facilities are provided for employees and patrons. Alderville First Nation requested a meeting to discuss potential impacts on flora, fauna, and water resources from the release of the game birds. Staff will provide their, have provided detailed comments to the applicant and will uh, coordinate a meeting with Alderville, the applicant and the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry to discuss the proposal further and to gain an understanding of the measures needed to address their any concerns. Alderville noted that they would like to build a good relationship with the applicant. Lower Trent Conservation had no objection to the proposal and detailed comments were provided to the applicant so they're aware of the regulatory requirements on the property. Canadian Pacific Railway has requested that a fence buffer distance be measured from the mutual, 
property line between the railway lands and the game reserve lands. Uh, they asked that that distance be permanently marked and I easily identified for all users of the game reserve. Uh, no firearms or projectiles are to be discharged in the direction of the railway tracks, included but not limited to firearms, slingshots, bow hunting arrows, etc. Uh, they do not want trespassing on the railway property at any time for any reason, including hunters and dogs. They also noted that they want to ensure that there's no conflict between their recommendations and requirements and those of CN. Uh, we haven't received comments from CN to date. We did circulate notice of the application to all property owners within 120 meters or 400 feet of the subject property. And a sign was posted at Heron Road and County Road 2 as it was the nearest uh, point accessible to a, the traveled road. We received a call from one property who expressed concerns with safety of ATV, ATVers and walkers that use the unassumed road adjacent to the property. They were concerned about dogs and birds escaping from the property, uh, the safety of the rail line, trespassing on adjacent lands, blocking of access to the unassumed roads, and risk of avian flu. A petition has been received objecting to the proposal. Uh, to date, it's been signed by 26 local residents and the summary indicates that they are concerned uh, of firearms being used close to homes or farms, uh, that there are ATV walking trails and train tracks beside the lots, and what is there to stop bullets from crossing the lot lines. Um, as discussed earlier, um, there's a number of uh, items that need to be addressed, but we are recommending deferral uh, of the application at this time to provide an opportunity to have further discussions with Alderville and the MNRF and the applicant uh, to identify um, appropriate bu buffer distances and other mitigation measures and address any concerns that there may be on the release of the game birds. Um, should the application be successful, as noted earlier, uh, a holding symbol would be applied to secure receipt of the opinion letter from the environmental consultant to address the works that were done on the open road. And uh, a site plan application is appropriate uh, to address items like fencing, signage, confirmation of parking, hours of operation, uh, provision of sanitary privy in accordance with the Ontario Building Code, and any recommendations the environmental consultant may have. So as mentioned, we are recommending deferral of the application at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, a big project. Very big project. Uh, questions or comments from council? Deputy Mayor, go ahead. Um, to your Mayor logo, to um, Tracy. I'm wondering, um, would the appropriate buffer distance change there? Um, initially, it's 100 acres that's needed for a game farm. This is 157 acres. So does that take in the appropriate buffer distance for the... Uh, the firearms that are, or the bullets that are being released? Well, I think what we need to do is establish what is the maximum distance, the types of bullets that are used for this type of hunting would be. And then that way we could have a set distance established. So that would bound the property on all sides so that the, the use is contained to an area where the bullets won't, um, uh, no. Okay. Trespass, I guess, if you will, on other properties or the rail line. Thank you. Just sorry, I got it. I want to take the first minute. I'll come to you, sir. I would just like to make sure that we're using correct terminology. So the term bullet would not be appropriate in this case. Oh. It is shotgun shell. Oh, shotgun. And when, when we consider the uh, the ammunition that is used. Um, the distance is considerably less 
and therefore we should we should use that correct terminology. Oh, thank you. And, and my understanding, so, and my understanding is, depending on the shot, there's different uh, different pellets. I guess is the proper the proper word that go farther and shorter, but and and what's in it uh -huh, uh -huh. as well. So, do you have a yeah. com? Or I, I should I, I should let council go first. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, to you, Mayor. So you know this is second one of these applications that we've had come towards us. And there's always a concern with safety and and uh, in the areas that they're they're being they're being held. Um, on top of you know being deferred to talk to all the real First Nations, also I mean you know there's there's also should be part of maybe a, a safety audit. There should be a part of you know development in that area. If if the, what's the future development maybe coming in that area like the um, I'm I'm not in favor of saying that, you know, you can we can put a buffer around some area and in a and um, shotgun shell is not going to go over over that buffer. It's not like we can put a 30 foot wall up there and everything's going to bounce off it and and uh, stop it from going outside that buffer zone. <clears throat> you know, especially running around the sea and in the in the uh, neighbors to the uh, to the west of the property. But uh, I know the area quite down there because i used to snowmobile through there and and uh we've atv through there a few times and uh just literally been walking down through there with where the big beaver dam is just kind of checking all that out but um it's uh it's something that probably needs to have way more further investigation than just you know putting stuff here there's multiple issues with this with this kind of uh of uh sport i'll say and i and you know how many of our of our own residents would use your hunting camp versus people coming in from out of town so we're putting ourselves at risk for maybe probably the the majority of the people coming in from out of town and i'm just saying that i don't know if it's true but um to allow something like this in a in an, in an area where there's residents i would prefer that something like this was was taken where there is no areas around whatsoever. I'm not against hunting and I'm not against gun. I'm actually for all that stuff. I'm just not sure that I'm happy with something like this going in an area where it is right now. No disrespect to the to the landowners or the or the the uh, business owner trying to do this. I'm merely looking out for the safety of our residents. Is that the right place for it? With the multiple issues that we have just in Tracy's report. That's, that comes with it. Thank you, Mike. Anybody else? Uh, else for O'Neill? Um, twofold. One, I think there is an established process and that it's important that we go through the process and work with the NMN FR. Uh, I'd like to see quite a bit of attention paid though to the implications of the unassumed road. Um, not just you, but other places in the township, we've had people making use of unassumed roads without permission, altering those roads again. So there's some liability issues and some safety issues that I think are specific to having the unassumed road there. Thank you. Councilor Booth, no comments? I would just like to know, uh, Tracy, if you could, there's a, I understand there's a building on the property and I've seen a map, but it doesn't show where that um, building is. And I know that the, the public road is fairly, seems to be fairly long traveling to the west. So is, is that uh, building at the west end of the property or the, at the east end? It would be at the east or sorry, at the west end of the property in this general vicinity i can point it out here it's in this vicinity here i can send a map okay uh, by email later so it runs it, it's a start and then runs the property runs further east quite a ways right there's so the, it's at the west end of the property the east end of the property has uh the majority of the provincially significant wetlands on it so the west end has more of the agricultural these own lands and it's uh that's the area where the building is and i can provide a map with that thank you uh mr hasba yeah. i assume i'm not sure but okay <laughs> would you like to comment sir 
poco yo estoy. I did come into the township. I did ask permission from the roads the supervisor at that time. He said it was no problem. All I did was replace the old cement culverts that had broken and resurfaced the road out of my own pocket, no expense of the township. And I did get permission to do this without any concerns. Okay. So that was all addressed. I just didn't do this without asking. I'm not that kind of person. To address your concerns, this land down here is all environmentally, environmentally protected around it. There will never be future development in this area. That is why this is a perfect location for a game park. I have been operational for a year and a half with no concerns, no complaints, no issues. Fully operational, 12 months. I bought this piece of land for this purpose to not annoy people that do not like hunting, except that's why this is the perfect parcel of land. I have also already put up six foot chain link along the entire length of the road. There is over a hundred wide meter of bush that pellets cannot be used in shotguns with number six, seven and a half in shot only. All the adjacent lands around me, I should be more concerned of, they use deer rifles with slots. Or they can use 270 rifles, 2250 calibers that will travel kilometers. The guns we use at our property will only travel 50, 60, 70 yards maximum. That's why we do it this way. Everyone must wear an orange vest. Everybody must be legally licensed. Everyone that enters my property must sign a waiver that they understand that this is a hunting area. It could be dangerous, but no more dangerous than you walking down a bush during the season and getting a slug shot through. Okay, you have more chance, you've got more chance to run over walking in front of this building than ever having game farm in one of the safest hunting locations in the world. In Ontario alone, there is over 25 operation game farms at this particular moment, releasing over a quarter million pheasants a year in Ontario. This brings business to our community and good people. And you say that it's all outside of that people from Brighton, I have people from Grafton, I have people from everywhere. There is people coming all over Cornwall and Ottawa, good people, the people we want in the community, spending money at our restaurants and putting gas in their tanks. Good people. That's hunters are good people. For the most part, there is bad people in everything. But as I say, this land, there will never be future developments. It can be developed. It's a this land is a hunting recreational land without having a game farm there. Guns will be going off. It doesn't matter if it's for this or just a normal hunting season. The boys hunt right beside me there. It sounds like World War III, duck hunting morning. It's a hunting area. All my neighbors, and I went and talked to all my neighbors personally yesterday, every single one. And not one of them have an issue. And every one of them would welcome to come in here and talk to me if you think they have a problem. Every one of them is happy with what I've done for the last year and a half with zero issues. When you walk down my road, you're safe. There's a six foot fence. I've also constructed new fencing along the CN rail tracks already. All this other my own pocket, my own expense, and my own blood and sweat to make sure there's a safe environment. Every hunter that enters my property gets a tour before the birds are released, show where, the, where they can hunt and where they cannot hunt. We do not hunt in the wetland area because you cannot put lead in water. All of this has been taken into consideration to have a safe place where families, and I didn't mean families, grandfathers and their sons, sons and their daughters, or husbands, wives, sons, daughters. I have family groups that come. I have husbands and wives who have been coming since we've been open. They come once a month. That is their day out with their dog to shoot a few birds and have an enjoyable day. What we're all looking for in life right now is something that nobody bothers you. There is not a house within two kilometers of this hunting. There is no possible way to drop pellets on any residential of any kind. Like, I, my I, wife and I have been involved in hunting our whole lives and dogs and, and professional guiding. We are, we are experienced at this. We are not some we just want a nice place, and that's why I purchased this land because 
you don't want to exercise up because to irritate their life. I understand that. That's why we've done it. Okay. Every other game farm material, they just open. They don't go through any of this process. This is the only MNR that have never dealt with this in history of all this. Okay, there's always been a game farm from this township. Jack Reeves had one just on the border of town here for years. If you remember old Jack Reeves, mm -hmm. okay, like there's been two or three more north of here. There's still another one running by no Rose Neath. It's not something new to this area. We always have game farms. The, the thing is, you want it to be run properly, and we've done that. We've done it for a year and a half, and you didn't even know it was there. That's how you know you're doing a good job where nobody complains and nobody has a problem. And it's safe. And any one of you are welcome to that come down and I will show you the whole property and show you how we get it. There's not, we have videos already of, of it. I can show you today if you like. This is my wife. We ran our farm for 30 some years. We're born out. Our bodies are gone. This is supposed to be our retirement, enjoyment, passion. And we run it as a passion. You can read the comments on our Facebook page of the people that have come to our place and the enjoyment they've experienced. You can't make that up. You can't fake a smile of making a person happy. Yes, I know it involves guns and killing, but that isn't the point of it. We are selling an experience. It, it's no different than you say you have a dog that does a jumping contest. These people have dogs that hunt, and this is their enjoyment. And then they get meat to go home and have it. You go to the store and buy a nice rack of ribs, they come to my game farm and buy some pheasants, and then they shoot them, they hunt with their dog, they enjoy themselves, they come home and they cook. That's what we are providing to these people. And some game farms are run better than others, but mine is run properly. We buy birds specifically from two different breeders. They're closed flocks, no concerns of avian flu. Um, we have to abide by all the MNR rules. The birds have to be a certain age. They have to be flight worthy. The property has to have certain coverage. Otherwise, you cannot use this game farm. It has to be fair chase. Okay? We can only let birds out 24 hours before a hunt, which we never do. We always let them go the same morning. We can never release more birds than you can physically, like, you can't release more than is possible to hunt in that time. So there's, there's the odd bird gets away, but, you know, there's been wild pheasants in, in Canada for 500 years since the, since the settlers first came. Like, it's, like when I moved here 34 years ago, my farm, there was wild pheasants everywhere, and probably some of you guys don't remember seeing wild pheasants. Um, it's, it's not like, everything we're doing is good. It's good for the community, it's good for the hunters, it's good for everyone. Like some of your comments there, like, do you hunt? Uh, not much anymore. Okay, but you used to. Yep. Correct. And did you enjoy it? Yep. Did you do it with your grandkids or your uncles or your cousins? And your memories are there that way. Mm -hmm. Correct. If it's done right, it's a wonderful experience. It's not. We are doing it right. Okay. okay. Thank you very much for your, your comments. Um, Anybody has any other questions? I'm glad to answer. Okay. Go ahead. Through you, your worship, to Victor. Victor, can you explain to me, just because I'm a little bit confused, there was another applicant here with the same concerns. So you don't sell birds, though, right? Like somebody just can't come and then buy a bird from you. This other group said that people could come and hunt or they could actually buy a bird. Yes, we can sell birds. Okay. But that is a completely separate issue <clears throat> than the game. That is that you can take pheasant home and raise them and you can sell them as long as you have a permit to any person. But that is a completely separate issue. So anyone in Ontario, anyone, like all of you guys could buy 10 birds off me, take them to your property, and hunt them once a year. But with what I have, you can come multiple times, and it's it's controlled regularly, and that's what the internet wants. They want to make sure it's done in a proper manner that is, the birds are raised right, the birds are clean, the birds can fly. It's it's a natural hunt, and the birds will not affect any fur or fauna. So, so, Victor, I'll ask you the same question I asked that applicant is, what would you say the percentage is? I would guess most people aren't going to come to your bird farm to just buy a bird from you. They'd... Well, 
No, but they, the idea is you go for the experience, like you said. Right. So you're not going to get very many people that are going to come to you and to the, to yeah. your. Yeah. Okay. No, 99% or more want to come, like they want the property to use because. Yeah. I understand the experience. Okay. Thank you. No, that's good. Thank you. Mike. Uh, through you, Mayor. So when Victor said that he went and talked to his residents, so what is this petition here that's got the names crossed out on it? None of those names are written by the police except one thing. And she told me she told the supporter, the poor fellow at the end of the road, I don't want to name James, she lied to him and told him it was about something else and got him to sign. That's why I personally, last night, went to every one of my adjacent neighbors to talk to them. I can get everyone to see what you do tomorrow if you want it. Or they will come to the next house and meeting and talk to them. Mm -hmm. They have no issue with what I'm doing here. They're happy with what I'm doing. Because I've done it right. My road, the unopened road, is never blocked by me. There are other countries that sneak in there that are locals, not my customers. Nobody sneaks in there. So there are other issues with other local hunters parking on that road, just like other places in the township. Not me. Both the neighbors at the end of my road love them. I follow the driving. Them. Okay. I'm a community person. Thank you. So, um. Uh, thank you, Mayor Local, to um, Victor. Uh, where is your, what property do you own? Because this isn't accessible. Is your property that you own coming off Highway 2? Yeah, Highway 2. At uh, Osborne? No. Oh, no. oh Heron. Yeah. Heron. And so what property is it that you own? Just the one in the red. Yeah, he, that's where the preserve is. But do you own property on no, Highway 2? And it doesn't no, that's that's the property. Yeah. yeah, I know that's the property, but I'm wondering, does he own property around here? Yeah, it's the properties are at Long and Red. Uh huh. That's the property. Of but do you live on that? But how does he? But how does he get there? So he comes down. Oh, okay, good. All right. Thank, I thought that's where it was. All right. This is the map I prepared yesterday. Okay, so this is my property. Blue line, blue line, blue line, yeah. line the buffer line. Okay, we'll That's where the chain link fence has been installed. The rest is page wire fence. And I'm willing, I'll fence the whole thing if need be, if that's an issue. But it's then I'm... Thing. Victor, you really shouldn't that's be. Sorry. Yeah. Never been the one who's been the one who's been the one who's You should stay here. So we have to Sorry, I apologize. I have a lot of passion in what we're doing. Okay. This is... Me too. Okay. Um, okay. I think from my standpoint of view, I understand that uh, we've got a little bit of a, not a difference of opinion, but you're very strong one way and we have to follow the rules and that's what we will do. And I think that's what Tracy is trying to make sure that we've got them all addressed before we can proceed. And, and that's, and that's why it's been offered, uh, pardon me, suggested to defer. So Tracy, I think you're doing the right thing. You've got to get some more answers. And when we get those answers, we'll make sure you're aware of them and uh, we'll get this to go somehow or another. Or that's what, that would be nice anyways. So I'm going to go ahead. Greg. I guess a question through you, your worship to Tracy, how long is it going to take for you to get these answers? Like, are we talking weeks, months, a year? Oh, right. When dealing with um, Elderville and the uh, MNR. Uh, we are coordinating a meeting now. Alderville did require a fee, which Mr. Hazma has paid. So we'll, we'll be in touch with them, uh, hopefully, in the coming month. I, I, I know they're, they did express that they're quite busy with a number of requests for reviews of applications because their area is quite large that they deal with. Um, so I would expect that we could get a meeting set up within the month and we I do have a meeting um with MNRF on Friday. I have questions for them that uh, I'm hoping they can help us out with some of the answers. So can you clarify who's requesting a fee? Alderville. A fee for what? For the review of the application. Hmm. It's a not an uncommon thing. Um the county also requires review fees um and lower trend as well. Um, we weren't aware until that the application had been circulated that they would require a fee. 
Can you, do you know what that fee is? How much is it? Three hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah. Is that the same for Lower Trent and the county? Uh, they have differing fees depending on the the application. I think it was Lower Trent's four hundred, and um, the county is three fifty. Okay, that's over a thousand dollars. And then we also have our own fees for the application. It does cover staff time. You gotta ask me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. I've been very proud for every agency that I've dealt with. I have spent over six thousand dollars on this in the last big week. I have no problem with going along with everything. Um I would approve a year and a half of the whole thing. I have invested a quarter million dollars in this project to show you her. I did everything right in this township and approved. I've been open. MNR approved license and operating for a year and a half. I don't know why we're back to the step, to be honest, but I'm really proud I've lived in this township for four months. I always tell everybody I'm one of the best townships in this area. And I agree, it's great. It's still the right one where it's free. And as long as you do things that don't hurt other people, that's why. I own 300 acres in this township. The other part is the land that has a program. That's why I bought this piece. It is appropriate for what I want to do, which is not bothering me. Okay. No, that's good. Thank you, Victor. I was just unaware that, you know, two or three or four agencies that you have to go to, and if it's three, four hundred dollars each, it, it's easy to rack up a thousand dollars pretty quick. Okay. Yeah, thank I've you. I've got to keep moving. Mike, do you have a comment? Yeah, to you, Mayor. So, I respect your passion for this, Victor, and um, I don't think anybody here is against hunting and guns. Not the point. Um, I would love to come down and go for a tour with you on your property so I can see myself exactly what's going on in there. I've uh, been around it, but not in it. And, uh, and you know, maybe a couple other ways should go do that. <clears throat> but I think that the, this is an opportunity. And um, when you say that we're the only township that you can think of that's actually putting owners through this, uh, maybe we're doing the right thing. And and um, and um, maybe the other townships are just kind of overlooking it. But not to say that uh, we want to make sure that it's, that it, for me, that it's done right, that it's safe for our residents. And if this is the perfect place for this, then I will agree with you 100%. Dave, 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 just, just, yeah. It's time off. Yeah. You come down. You had seen. That's true. I just showed this this meeting over. I have a video showing what we do. I'd be glad to show it. But anyone here that wants to see it, you can see exactly what goes on. Like it's on Facebook. Like it's not like we've tried to hide anything. We're, we're not suggesting that no, we're trying to. Uh, anyways, I'm sorry, but I've I've got to go to another meeting right away. So I'm going to call this. Tracy, I think you've got instructions to keep going. And uh, since we can't get this resolved, uh, one thing I would suggest, um, Victor mentioned there's two two kilometers, I think he said, to the nearest property. But yet you're yeah, yeah, to it, but you're saying 700 meters. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, so perhaps we should have a, a map of of the residents around there when we come back, if okay. we could. Sure. Okay, and and you're still got to look at the CP. I don't know how you can. Uh, uh, hunt and not shoot towards the, the railway sometime or another, unless you. The trees are higher than the grass. Yeah. Anyways, I'm going to read the resolution. Be it resolved that the application Z01 2024 to amend the zoning on parcels of land owned by Victor Asma, legally described as part lot four and five, concession B, SS Forced Road, and north part of lot three, concession. B S S Force Road, geographically in the township of Haldeman, to permit the use of a game bird hunting preserve in the township of Alma Haldeman, zoning bylaw number 19, 2019, as amended, be deferred to provide time to consult with Alderville First Nation, discuss concerns with the Ministry of Natural Resource, Resources and Forestry, and to identify a safe buffer distance to adjacent properties and 
properties and road and rail allowances. Can I get a mover and a seconder? Moved by Deputy Mayor Stover, seconded by Councillor Ainsworth. Further discussion? All in favor? Harry. And I'm going to ask that we uh, recess for five minutes, and I will be stepping out, and Deputy Mayor Stover will be handling it from here on in. Thank you. Oh, I need to move in a second. <laughs> I'll miss. Moved by Deputy Mayor Stover, seconded by Councillor uh, Ainsworth. All in favor? Motion's carried, <laughs> and you'll have to get a motion to move the new chair. Yeah. Okay, so we're coming back into the meeting, and as the mayor has noted, he has stepped down his chair. As per our procedural bylaw, um, the deputy mayor shall assume the chair during the meeting. Um, and now the deputy mayor, um, Joan Stover, will proceed. Thank you, uh, Yolanda. Uh, we will re reconvene to the planning uh, regular council meeting at 1047. We have a mover and a seconder. Um, thank you, Councillor O'Neill. Thank you, uh, Councillor Ainsworth. All in favor? Thank you. So we will continue on our agenda and um, we will now have a, a presentation by Dave McGlennon of WWD McGlennon Insurance Broker Limited. Read the Municipal Insurance Program for 2024. I have a mover and a seconder for that, please. Thank you, Councillor Booth. Thank you, Councillor O'Neill. All in favor? We're, uh, whereas the Council of the Township of, oh, that'll be afterwards. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, go ahead, uh, Mr. McGlennon. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Good morning. Is this close enough for uh, everybody to hear? I guess no one cares. Everyone who cares is right in this room. So. <laughs> <laughs> or or they will be on YouTube saying they can't hear you. Right. Okay. Nobody cares. <laughs> uh, thanks again. Thank you. 2024, um, fairly uneventful year in 2023, as I was just discussing with Mayor Logo. Um, we did a lot of heavy lifting in December of 2022, when uh, we've had several years of double digit, fairly significant premium increases. And with the previous insurer, they were coming in at uh, over half a million dollars. 
for a renewal premium for 2023, but we were able to affect coverage through uh, Marsh Insurance at substantial savings last year. Uh, 2023, there were no new claims. Uh, claims history was good, touch wood. And there was a small increase. 2024, we're looking at uh, reinsurance is a big factor in our insurance. So the insurers get insurance. So most of that increase is due to reinsure uh, premiums increasing. Also, there was a large um, expenditure at the Centerton Works Garage. So a fairly significant uh, multi-million dollar increase in insured value. A couple of new vehicles, I believe, last year um, that we know of. We're still in the process of getting uh, staff to update the public works vehicle listing. So that may change. I'm not sure if there's additions, subtractions, that sort of thing. Um, one fairly significant change this year under the cyber liability policy, they're requesting that a designated individual, I'm assuming a staff member, um, be provided with the app. So there's a claims reporting app for the cyber insurance, which will be sent out once we get the policy and we need, just need verbal confirmation that that's been downloaded by someone. If your phone crashes or your computer crashes <laughs> from a cyber event, I don't know how you report a claim with the app, but I'm not, I'm not in that uh, business. Uh, deductibles are the same. Liability claims are $25,000 deductible property and auto are $10,000. Those are fairly low in the insurance industry for municipalities, so that's good. I wouldn't recommend increasing those. The lower you can keep them for as long as you can, the better. And as I say, the premium is still fairly reasonable, very reasonable, extremely reasonable. Uh, no tax on auto insurance. And I think that's pretty much everything that I have. There was a large increase in property coverages, as I say, due to um, mainly the Centerton Works building. So if you have any questions for me or comments? Well, now I'll accept uh, comments, questions from the, uh, the board here. Um, go ahead, Councillor uh, Hanksford. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, a couple of questions. It's, uh, so as we're at Roma, Dave, we... Uh, I actually took one of their seminars and it had to do with uh, municipal liability. So it was all about insurance. And um, and uh, figuring out ways for municipalities pr to protect themselves through data, through through uh, uh, proper fact sheets and stuff like that when stuff happened. And and um, but all in all, it's it seems like there's there's no real light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing for us. But um, it is out there and everybody's dealing with it for sure. That's the common, the, the common narrative for that whole seminar, but a couple of things. Um, and I asked it in, in the, uh, in the, in the presentation is where municipalities are liable for the 1%. Is there anything in the insurance world that can help the municipality for these nuisance lawsuits? So, for instance, if someone is impaired and they're driving down one of our roads and they go through a stop sign or they take a corner too fast and go through the ditch, um, it seems to be our fault because, you know, between the pavement and the gravel is too 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 far apart or the road sign wasn't close enough to the corner or some stupid thing. And we ended up paying 50 percent of the of the premium because we're one percent liable. And my other question is, and I don't know if our if the insurance covers it, it's like the uh, safe driving app i i heard you mention an app and i wasn't sure what it was but is is it possible that our um say for instance our public work uh operators could do um like that safe driving app to gain more of a, a reduction sort of plug into the black box and do the yeah kind of thing. at this point no um when gps uh units were installed 
in public works vehicles several years ago that helped there was a premium reduction as far as nuisance liability claims documentation is paramount uh, inspections of whether it's facilities roads you know you get the minimum maintenance standards for roads sidewalks they need to be followed they need to be inspected on a regular basis and documented if you have that piece of paper that said you know joe blow drove down the road plowed it at 9 a.m somebody comes through at 9 15 and has an accident then you can say look we went through that road or whatever the requirements are i'm not 100 percent on the mms minimum maintenance standards but you need to make sure that your signs signage is in place and it's in the correct spot all those kind of things because they will come after you but if you've got documentation saying look we did this 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 and this on this date then the judge is going to say okay you're free to go so they absolve you the joint and several where you're one percent liable but end up paying for 99 percent or 50 percent of the claim because you've got 25 million that's a legal issue with the provincial government that they have to pass legislation that doesn't allow that to happen because courts are just saying the big pocket syndrome well you've got it you're going to pay for it so that's not fair and i'm not <clears throat> there was a bit of momentum a few years back but it seems to have stalled lately because we're still talking about it unfortunately maybe with the mpp i don't know okay do do we have like a grace period for you know one day five days seven days like if something happens we got that grace period to get it fixed where we're probably still liable but do we have um more of an answer for why I don't know after if we the, have that after the fact if there's an accident or an like incident. yeah so you say so something happened we had a bad rainstorm something got washed out we didn't catch it in time someone went in it got hurt something like that uh, uh, go ahead uh, mr cao if i may through you sure deputy mayor i'd like to address okay. councillor um Ainsworth. I to think about your last name there for a <laughs> we didn't spend enough time together the last two days <laughs> Um, or we spent too much. Yeah. Uh, so with respect to claims, um, this is why there is a significant need to ensure that our uh, our reporting uh, processes and our record keeping processes are completely up to date. Um, with respect to a claim and having days to rectify a situation, once there is an accident, it's too late. So there are uh, many different things, as Mr. McLennan has identified, with respect to record keeping. Uh, if we use the roads example, uh, GPS being installed into trucks, but you better hope that your GPS system is up to date and current and actually tracking, uh, mapping, speeds, weather, et cetera. Uh, and if it's not, and if you're one of those municipalities that are still relying on handwritten notes, you better hope and pray when there's a claim because it's not going to help you. Um, so with respect also to something that affects our insurance as presented, um, driver training, you better hope that you're investing, uh, in some training yearly for your drivers so that you can say, okay, so-and-so was involved in an incident and we can prove records of, uh, actually having spent time with them through training. Uh, a good company to use is something like DriveWise. Uh, for both fire and roads department personnel. Um, other aspects with regards to snow removal <laughs> to address your point on uh, insurance companies um, identifying or what they do when there is a claim. My experience has been, unlike the municipal, which is different uh, in the private world with respect to snow clearing, as an example, or slips and falls, a lot of insurance companies now to claims and you're put on notice of cancellation. Whether there's any merit to those claims or not, to the aspect that people can make a claim, and insurance companies are obviously a business as well, so they're going to do things to protect themselves too, much like we need to do things to protect ourselves as well. So it becomes a great working relationship and partnership with our insurance broker uh, to identify these 
types of things, but there is a lot of work that could be done uh, from the counselor perspective with regards to our MPs and our MPPs to assist in this. So that when you are living in an environment where there is uh, climates of uh, that produce a risk, that the ability to sue the municipality might be lessened. But that is obviously quite a conversation. Um, so there are many things that we can do and, and there will be updates for council um, with respect to our liability mitigation and what we can do, but definitely something that we need to do as a group. Thank you. So, sorry, Mayor, or Deputy Mayor, I had to add to this. Um, so back in our Good Roads conference we had last year with Council O'Neill and myself, there was many opportunities to talk to different, um, um, the, uh, the booths that were there about these apps that you can use for keeping track of your signs, your culverts, your bridges, that kind of stuff. Or maybe that uh, would be go part and part with the insurance and in, in keeping track of our stuff where it's not just written or in someone's memory. So I don't know if we have that, any kind of those apps now. I'm not sure what Dave, that app that you were talking, is, is that some kind of a same idea? It's just strictly for the cyber just for that, okay. Yeah, cyber clean. So there are those ones out there. Um, check our old notes if you want, or they're they're uh, to find out who those those companies were that had them. But they're all there. Maybe if anybody's going to the Good Road this year, we could see if we could get some update on them. Thank you. Regardless of what you use, if it's electronic or paper, it's got to be filled out completely. I've seen requested copies of incident reports and they're getting better. Not, I'm not strictly talking about all the column it's across the board, commercial and municipal. Um, but when they get handed in, someone needs to read them and say, okay, you haven't filled this out. You haven't filled this out. You can't just put, you know, see above kind of thing. It, it has to be filled out complete, Thank whether you. it's electronic or big. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Councillor O'Neill. Um, three items, if I may, Deputy Mayor. The first is fairly straightforward on the council's accident coverage. You have seven councillors covered. We only need five. Yeah, I'm not sure that was an, an error, but it doesn't affect the premium. I did ask them about that, so okay. I'll get that rectified. Um, as Councillor Ainsworth said, uh, it was a very big issue, road safety and both saving lives and liability when we were at Good Roads last year. And one of the things that came up was that municipalities should have a road safety study in place. Are you familiar with that? And how high on our list of priorities do you think that needs to be for us? Road safety study? Well, I know in the old days they used to, when we would try to contact a member of council, they say, oh, there, or the public works personnel, they're out on a road tour. So in the old days, it was fairly informal. I think it needs to be more formal. Um, I hate to recommend more studies or more consultants or more fees, but whether you do it internally with you know, staff that have trained, but I think it, it's very important to do those probably more than on an annual basis. I don't know how often it's done, but probably every time they're out, something needs to be developed that can be recorded for sure it's very important yeah if i may just to clarify that was sort of at two levels the one that ongoing tracking and then this road safety study was something done every five years and they were talking about using lidar and and equipment that a smaller municipality wouldn't have access to but then uh in courts it had been that if you were working on your road safety study then that said, yeah, you're, the municipality's acting in good faith. But if it didn't show that you were working to improve your overall safety, then it didn't go well for the municipalities in those cases. And somewhat related to that, um, the question about unassumed roads. We have tremendous amounts of unassumed roads. We do have a um, policy, is it? Bylaw. And, you know, it says clearly that people 
that from the general public shouldn't be doing anything on these roads to alter these roads. But I mean, obviously that happens, whether it's somebody walking and there's a tree across or on their ATV and the branches are too low and they're cutting branches. So we've got, um, I, I, yeah, I have, I, I, it just seems a little not very clear to me on that and the liability related with that. Thank you. Do we have any other uh, questions? Um, uh, to you, uh, Dave, I'm just wondering when you're looking at uh, our policy for the year, um, have you, what all do you look at? I know you have done your, um, what, you know, your intro to that. Are there other areas that you look at that uh, you're confident you have covered all the areas that um, could be an issue for us at AH? Yes. Um, and as far as liability, everything is covered. The vehicles, of course, we need an up-to-date list of vehicles uh -huh. on an annual basis, and we're halfway there, probably. Um, and the other thing is, obviously, the inventory of properties, equipment, that sort of thing. So uh, we're pretty good at, uh, staff is good at advising us when things occur, purchases, uh, additions, new construction, that sort of thing. So, yeah, we're, we're pretty up to date. And they're fairly flexible in terms of it's a blanket policy, but as long as they haven't missed anything major, such as arenas or public works garages, that's, we're, we're in good shape. Thank you. Okay, seeing no other comments, uh, I'll read the resolution. Whereas the Council of Township of Alma Calderman, considering the presentation by Dave McLennan of WWD McLennan Insurance Broker Limited regarding the 2024 insurance program for the township, be it resolved that the council approve of the municipal insurance program for 2024 as presented. Could I have a mover and seconder for that, please? Uh, moved by uh, Councilor Ainsworth. Seconder, um, Councilor Boo, thank you. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to um, item number 9.2, engagement session by Jerry Pingator and Grace McDonald of the Lumex Group Re the Fire Master Plan. This item has been withdrawn from the agenda and will be discussed in closed session on January 25th under section 239B and D of the Municipal Act 2001 relating to B, personal matters of an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, and D, labor relations or employee negotiations. So we'll move on to uh, item number 10, correspondence from Abigail Miller, activist, archivist at North Rhode County, and museum dated January 11th, 2024, re the Northumberland County Archives and Muse Museum as a resource for heritage advisory committees. I have a mover and a seconder for that, please. Oh, just... oh okay, sorry. Be it resolved that the Council of the Township of Alma Calden receive the correspondence from the Northumberland County Archives and Muse Museum dated January 11, 2024, regarding the reminder to use the NCAM as a resource for heritage advisory committees and planners for information. Can I have a mover and a seconder for that, please? Moved by Councillor O'Neill, uh, seconded by Councillor uh, <laughs> All in favor? Any discussion on uh, that? Go ahead, Councillor Ensign. For you, Deputy Mayor. So, is should 
should we be maybe putting things down as a path forward? Do we need to uh, put any of the, any of our heritage uh, buildings and stuff towards this? Uh, this what is it? yeah, Bill twenty three. Amanda? If I may, through you, Chair. Um, so I've been in contact with the uh, Chair of the Heritage Alnwick Haldeman Committee, uh, Bob Dean, and uh, he's reviewed this documentation. I've also forwarded it to him for his committee for them to talk about it as well. Uh, they've already known about this legislation. Uh, obviously, it's been passed for quite some time. Um, but the county has reached out saying that they could be used as a valuable resource when uh, designating some of these heritage uh, buildings within townships. Bob has indicated to us that we don't necessarily have a municipal registry for uh, a lot of our heritage properties, but we do have a listing that we have on our website of some of the century homes that are within the township. Um, a lot of them are not designated, but um, because it's not on an official registry, he is not um, taking the stand that they need to be designated. Um, whereas the legislation is basically saying if you have it on a, a particular registry, if they're on there for two years and they're not designated as a heritage property, then they'll be taken off that list. We don't have a registered document for that. So Bob is just saying that it's basically a listing for, for residents information. It's not something that's registered. It's not something that's designated, um, but it is a listing of all the century homes in the, in the area. So if we were to do remodeling on historic homes or buildings, mm -hmm. could that be something that we, sh we should be looking at maybe should be on this list so that they're classified as as heritage so for instance our vernonville community center or a little old the uh, the Anglican church down here where it was used for bookstores and clothing stores here like right you know now, some church. of them are designated properties. I know yeah. that that little church that you're referring to, I believe that's a designated property. Um, I I could run this by Bob Dean and ask him what he plans on doing going forward. Um, but if it's not being renovated and if it's just a listing on our, our website, I don't think he plans on designating those. Unless there's action, obviously, if there's some sort of action going on with renovations, that kind of thing. And I, I, I don't know what the stipulations are. I don't know if it's a request that the owner must do, um, but it's definitely something that we could run by Bob and have him take a better look at, maybe even do a report to council. Yeah, that would be great because I'd, I'd be concerned if we had historic buildings <clears throat> that came up in a public conversation where you know, do we keep it or do we tear it down? And it's not part of a historical monument kind of thing. So okay. thank you. Uh, go ahead, Councillor O'Neill. As our um, deputy clerk has pointed out, we have been discussing this at the committee. In the past, it worked and there was a longer time frame that happened if one of the houses on this in that binder came forward to have something done on it. Um, they would basically call in. And there was only one example since I've been involved where it was a very old building. They went and said, no, it's not worth saving. But at that point, they had 60 days, was it? And now that's a much shorter time frame. So I, there doesn't seem to be a will to formally designate. The former system was working because it only needed to be tapped into and occasionally and there was a big enough time frame but I don't I mean it's a staffing issue right I, it's not really a volunteer's role to be involved to that level so anyway uh, certainly we'll be discussing this and I'll bring forward your comments then but yeah they've already been thinking about it and working with both our um, planning core assistant whatever your title is here and with our deputy clerk so 
my cue. I'll uh, read the resolution. Whereas Council of Township of Alma. Oh, not that one. <coughs> Oh, people are moving ahead. Good. Uh, this has to do with um, agenda item number 10.2. Okay, good. Uh, I got it. Whereas the Council of Township of Alma Coleman, considering the correspondence from the Township of Hamilton dated January 12th, 2024 regarding the draft official plan amendment for alternate notice provisions and whereas council has determined that alternative measures for information to the public are also required under the township of all columns official plan be it resolved that council receive the correspondence for information and direct the senior planner to make preparations for the amendment to the township of all columns official plan for alternate notice provisions. I have a mover and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Booth. Thank you, Councillor O'Neill. All in favor? Any questions? I'll go ahead, Councillor uh, Booth. You, you, your worship to Tracy. Tracy, I've read this twice. Can you explain it to me exactly what it means? Um, yeah, so uh, with the newspapers no longer putting out print copies and, and distributing them. It makes it hard for us to get notification to the public when we're dealing with general amendments, like major official plan amendment or, or rezoning, like something that would apply to the, the whole of the municipality, like the short-term rental zoning amendment that we're going to need to do um, in the planning act, there's regulations for notification. So where it's a property specific, application we circulate to residents within a certain radius or property owners and we post a sign whereas a general amendment you can't really put put up a sign so we in in the past it's typical practice to put it in the newspaper uh, but the planning act does have regulations that allow for municipalities to put in their official plan alternative measures for notification uh, so uh, hamilton township is proposing to put notification on their website and social media pages and also um, to collect uh, a mailing list through subscriptions. And we're proposing to do much of the same. Um, we're going to need to uh, do a general amendment to the zoning bylaw in February for the short-term rental zoning. Uh, so that notification needs to go out. So we're utilizing the tax um, mail out that's going out right now so at the beginning of february though there'll, there'll be a mail out so we're using that in the interim and planning to put notification for a similar official plan amendment to our official plan so that we have a mechanism to get notice out to the general public in the future okay thank you very much uh, go ahead uh, mr cao through you deputy mayor to uh, councillor ruth and the other councillors, there will be a discussion tomorrow and close because it has to do with contractual nature um, to do with this type of thing, but it is through a CO update. Um, so the township has already been making plans uh, and taking steps forward. This uh, documentation that it comes before you from Township of Hamilton is great, and uh, our township will have uh, great solutions in hand as well. Do you have any other questions or comments? Seeing none, thank you. Oh, uh, go ahead, Councilor. Thank you, Deputy Please. Mayor. I was actually just going to browse through, but we'll probably have to change our procedure by law if we're changing, if we're going to change this. No? Okay. Tracy, could you clarify that? I think it's just changes within the official plan, right? Uh, correct. So the the regulations state that if there's policies in the official plan laying out the alternatives alternative measures for notification then we're permitted to do that um, so that would be the legislation that directs how notification on planning act applications have to take place 
this is this is actually good because it goes it falls right in line with you know what we've been talking about on previous meetings about communication and how we're going to get out there to our residents so uh this would be a good time to kind of cover it all with our website <clears throat> with um emails emails are great but uh, we do have some people that are probably not savvy with that kind of stuff so this would be all a great picture just to kind of put it all together okay thank you moving on to our uh, planning bylaws 11.1 be resolved that bylaw number 02-2024 being a bylaw to amend the comprehensive zoning bylaw number 19-2019 as amended of the township of Alma Caldeman for Isabella Boisfort and Richard Clark, concession six part of lot 26 geographical Caldeman be read and deemed to be passed on this 24th day of January, 2024. I have a mover and seconder for that, please. Thank you, Councillor Booth. Thank you, Councillor Ainsworth. All in favor? Any questions arising from that? Seeing none, thank you. Carried. Uh, planning or related announcements. Moving on to agenda item number 12. I don't have any at this time that are planning related. Uh, Councillor Ainsworth, would you have any? For you, Deputy Mayor, actually, um, I wanted to uh, just kind of give Council a short brief. Uh, I know it hasn't, well, actually, it does have to do with planning because of the uh, seminars that I went to on the aroma conference so um you know just a brief couple of minutes here um so the first thing i sat down with our with the uh, zone five rep in that meeting and that meeting was pretty much the whole thing about our provincial, our provincial policy statement and everybody agreed that the changes that need to come to that and um all the councillors mayors that were in the room were we're um, kind of asked to make sure that we get back to um, our uh, our um, zone rep, uh, Pam, and with um, emails so that she could use to take to um, the head of Roma, her her, her uh, board, and that would push into the, uh, the province to start looking at this provincial policy statement and kind of even out the playing field when it comes to severances and, when it, and give the municipality the power to make the decision and not get their hands slapped you know so so that was a great conversation everybody in the room has the same problem and um so it was loud and clear that you know right from the province down to the counties down to the municipal that the uh from the provincial policy statement to the official plans from all the other ones need to be changed and need to give the municipality the power to make the final decision uh, for real. So that was loud and clear. Um, the, the other thing was, um, you know, the drainage act when it comes to the C CN and CP, that is a huge thing. It's in court right now through, uh, the, the municipality of Chad and Kent is taking it on. They're big. They got, I guess they got deep pockets. The, uh, Roma has, um, is, is working with them. So we have an issue here with drainage with the, through the CN, uh, the, any of the farmers fields and stuff that are drained along the number two and, uh, south down towards the lake is an issue. Uh, we, we were notified about the draining act and, um, it's a huge dollar. I brought up about our, our rail crossing. Um, <clears throat> Dave and I had conversations about the, uh, the invoice that we got on that and, uh, where they're telling us that we have to pay a hundred percent of it. There are there are people in the room at that conversation that said no, they only pay fifty percent of it. So that was a good news. Um, so it looks like we'll just have to do our due diligence on that. And um, you know, the other thing again with with uh, with Doug Ford speaking, all the grants that are coming up for the rural economic development and um, infrastructure in our in our towns and stuff. That was all a, a great conversation, and it's something that um, our uh, our our CAO could, could uh, him and I had conversations about that we could kind of follow up on some of those things. The insurance stuff that we just went through today was a huge thing at, at Roma. 
And, um, you know, Dave and I both went to different seminars so we could kind of take in more information of, you know, what could we bring back to the, uh, to the municipality to help us in the future. But, um, you know, the, the, the big things out of it was cause we deal with it all the time was that was the, uh, the zone meeting. And, um, and of course that, cause that CN is going to probably, but come up, come up, bite us in the butt here a few times because we got like probably four crossings that we have plus one that we probably share with Cranby down at the, uh, East end of town. So anyways, Good. Thank you. Thank you for attending that. Uh, Councillor O'Neill, do you have anything to add? Nothing at this time. Thank you. Councillor Booth? Thank you. And we will move on to uh, item number 13 on the agenda, the confirming bylaw. Be it resolved that bylaw number 03-2024, a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the municipal planning regular session of council held on Tuesday, January 24th, 2024, be read and deemed passed this 24th day of January, 2024. Have a mover and seconder for that, please. Thank you, Councillor O'Neill. Thank you, Councillor Ainsworth. All in favor? Passed. Thank you, everyone. And one more. Be it resolved that the municipal planning regular session of council of Tuesday, January 2024, 24, 2024, be adjourned at 1125. I'm mover and seconder for that. Thank you, Councillor Booth. Sure, he had a fan. Oh, okay. thank you, Councillor Ainsworth. Thank you. Everyone have a good afternoon. See you tomorrow.